I think I'm okay now. So we copy negative one fourth, we copy the integral with the limits of integration. We have to replace one over u to the seventh by u to negative seventh. And then when we integrate u to negative seven, we have to find the function whose derivative is this. By adding one to the power, which be, makes a negative six, and dividing by the result. First, please deal with a factor. Negative one over four times negative one over six is one over 24. And only then plug in two, and then plug in one. When you subtract, plug in one. And that's how we got here. Do we need to look at another definite integral? If yes, please choose. Um, yes, please. I'd like to look at 61. 61 it is. Very good. Awesome. I'm on page 6. And you said 61. Let's take a look. 61. So the integral from 0 to 1 from 12x, the fifth root of 1 minus x squared dx. I see the fifth root. Is that the fifth root? Do you see that? Okay. As you know, my device is so far away. Okay, good. What bothers you? I know that this is not the scientific way, but it's easy to remember. What bothers you from this? Not 12, not x, and not dx. Those cannot bother you. 12 is simple, x is simple, dx is dx. What does bother you then? The the one minus x squared. That's it. That's what bothers me. Because I cannot simplify it. I have to find dy. I can continue without dy. Negative 2x dx. That's it. I have x, I have dx. I don't have negative 2. Okay, fine. Multiply by negative 2 and divide by negative 2. <coughs> this is 1. I didn't do anything. But now, negative 2 with x and dx, they will all be in dy. So this is negative 1 half in front, and I have dy. This is gone, this is gone, this is gone. They're in dy. There is a 12. Okay. I put it outside. So this is gone. Now I need to know what to do with this. That's the last piece that has to be accounted for. And I have the to... Yes? Say it again. The fifth root of y. Exactly. But we really, really wanted is as y to one-fifth. But yes, that's what it is. It's the fifth root of y, which is easy. Why? Because I have one term. I can change it into this, but I cannot do anything to that because it has two terms, and I cannot simplify. Awesome. Now I have to say stop. You cannot continue. We, you need limits of integration. New ones. Not for x, but for y, because that's what we have here. So when the lower limit for x is 0, what will be the result for the lower limit of for y? 1. Exactly. When the upper limit for x is 1, what will be the upper limit for u? I'm sorry, for y. Anyone? When the upper limit is 1, what is the answer for you? I'm sorry, for y. 0. That's it. 
negative 2 all over 2 is negative 6. And now I'm asking myself, how do I get the function that I differentiate to get y to 1 fifth? The same rule with, like with any power. The same procedure, same rule. Y to which power? Over the same resulting number. How do I get this? Tell me and I'll write it on the side. One fifth plus one. That's it. So five plus one, which is six fifth. So six fifth over six fifth. I know it's ugly, but that's what it is. Do not do anything before you simplify these numbers first. So negative 6 over 1 times 5 over 6 times u to 6 fifths from 0 to 1. Thank you very much. They're gone. Negative 5. Now, I plug in 1. 1 to any power is 1. Minus. I plug in 0. 0 to 6 fifths is 0. So negative 5 times 1, negative 5. And yes, you can answer, I'm sorry, you can check this answer with the graphing calculator. So let me show you one more time. Not all calculators have this feature, however. So the integral from, that's math and number 9. And it goes from 0 to 1. And then we have 12x. And then, careful with the fifth root, I put everything in parentheses, 1 minus x squared. And the fifth root is 1 over 5. So power, 1 over 5. Of course, closed, we put parentheses, and then the x. When I click Enter, the answer has to be negative 5, because I entered this correctly. If it's not negative 5, I'll say, oops, and I have to go back to the board, drawing board. From this, from scratch. Look at that! It takes a while. This is the error of the calculator. It's like a tolerance. Okay, so this is nothing. That's a minor error that the calculator has. I didn't expect it, it to have a, an error on this one, but it does. So nothing is perfect. Oh. I got negative 5, and they, it says positive 5. So, uh-oh, let's go back to the drawing board. I'm missing a negative somewhere. How come? So, let me... Uh, uh, is it because the 1 and the 0 are flip-flopped, or does that not... Yes, of course. I wrote, I wrote them. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for noticing that. Of course, I can. I'm not allowed to do this, so it has to be from one to zero. Of course, thank you. I don't know where I was looking. Thank you, thank you very much. Yes, of course, that's why. So I have this. I have zero minus one. Thank you. So instead of copying from one to zero, I. I don't know why, no reason at all. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. I copied from 1 to 0. I, from, instead of copying from 1 to 0, I copied from 0 to 1. I'm not allowed to do that. And that's the reason why the signs were switched. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. How do we feel about definite integrals with the substitution rule? Are we okay? Are we okay? Can we continue with something else? Do you think we should continue working on this or can we continue with something else? It's an application of what we just did that I like to look at. I like your input. Just tell me what you would like me to do. Would you like 
another problem or can we continue? I'm good to continue. Okay, so let's do that. If you find anything in Pearson that you would like to go back to, please bring it to class. Please, always. Okay, so we have two sections to cover in Chapter 5. Chapter 5 deals with applications of integration. And we only look at two applications. One of them is called consumer and producer surplus. With your permission, I'm going to use CS, consumer surplus, and PS, producer surplus. So this is section 5.1. And the other application in, is the last section of this chapter, 5.7, as a second application, differential equations. It's an application of integration. What is this? Well, equations that have derivatives in them. For example, y prime minus 2x y double prime plus 2x equals 10x cubed. So when we get to 5.7, hopefully Tuesday, um, we will, this is a complicated situation, we will have much easier examples, but differential equations. Equations that have, have derivatives in them. First derivative, second derivative, etc. And we will be asked to solve for y. Not this complicated situation, but a much easier one. Okay, so let's try to understand consumer and producer surplus. So, so we have, if you remember the, um, so this is, uh, first of all, on the y-axis we have price per unit. And here we have number of units. So if you remember when we talked about consumer um, um, uh, demand and supply, demand, D of X, and supply, S of X. The demand has to do with us, what we want as consumers. The supply has to do with the producer, what the producer wants. So the demand, the demand of X for us is a decreasing function, D of X, a decreasing function. What does this mean? It means that if the price is high, we are willing to purchase a small number of units. If the price is small, we are, you, you are, we are willing to purchase a larger number of units. So if the price is $100, we can only afford one unit. If the price per unit is $5, then we afford to buy, we can buy more units, more number of units. So now, let's say for any point on the demand function. So I'm going to use a different color. So let's say for this point. So I'm just going to make up some numbers. We're going to look at examples in a minute, but I just want to make, um, make it clear with some numbers. So let's say we're willing to buy five units at the price of $9 per unit. So we are happy with that. For $9 per unit, I don't know, we buy five, I'm not sure, five avocados. Of course, they are not $9 a unit, but something like that, anything. So we are willing at the price of $9 per unit 
we are willing to buy five units. How much it will cost us? Five times nine. What is that? It's this, the area of this rectangle. So the area is base times height, five times nine, 45. This is in dollars, and this is our cost or expenditure. But look at what really, really happens here. The area, the entire area, under the demand function, is what we are willing to pay. Willing to pay. We are willing to pay this area, total area. But we are actually not paying. This is what we are willing to pay. But this is not what we are actually paying. We are only paying $45 which is only this area. Although we are willing to pay for the entire cost, we are actually paying only this. Well, the top area, this piece up here, the red piece, is called consumer surplus. We're not paying for it. We are willing to pay for this entire area, but we are actually paying only 45. So this is our surplus. We are paying 45, but actually we're getting more for our $45. How much more? This area in US dollars. So how would you determine, what do you think will be the procedure of determining the red area? to see what is our consumer surplus, the consumer surplus area. How will I determine that? I will determine the entire area under D of X between 0 and 5. Well, I know how to find that. We just discussed that. Is the integral from 0 to 5 from D of X dx. I don't really like D and D, but you know, this is one thing and this is the other. So this is the entire area. But if I want to determine just this piece, the red piece, then I have to subtract the $45, which is base times height. Whatever I get here, let's say a dollar and 25 cents, this, as an example, is the consumer surplus. I'm paying $45. I should have paid 45 plus 1 to 25, but I'm not paying that extra. I'm getting it, although I'm not getting the money in my hand, this is my additional value that I'm not paying for it. So that's the consumer surplus. Now let's talk about the producer surplus. Any questions before we look at the, the producer surplus on this? The idea is the same, but of course, the uh, supply function is an increasing function, not a decreasing function, because they are willing to, to sell more at a higher price, of course. So now the producer surplus. This is still number of units. This is still the price per unit, dollar per unit, so price in dollars per unit. And let's say this is the S of X, the supply function. Okay, so at a particular point, any point, again, I'm going to put some numbers. I'm going to use the same numbers. I don't know why it's the same thing. Okay. So what happens here? Okay, we have this area. And this entire area is what the producer gets, right? So receipts. 
But what they are really, really, really giving us, it's this. They're getting more money. They're getting $45 from us. But they're actually giving us the value of this area only. What is this piece then? This is the producer surplus. So they also pocket something extra. The cost is not really 45. They are charging us 45 base times height, the entire rectangle, the area of the entire rectangle. But they're pocketing this piece, this piece, without telling us. Okay, so then the producer surplus will be, how do I determine this piece? Well, I have to determine the area which is 45 of the rectangle. But now I have to subtract this area. So from the total, I subtract this area to get the piece that is the producer surplus. But what is this area? Like before, the integral from 0 to 5, but this time under the graph of s of x, dx. So one more time, consumer surplus the area under the, the demand minus the area of the rectangle. The producer surplus is the area of the rectangle minus the area under the S of X. Now, final step before, hopefully we can look at an example. What we are in, really interested in, so this was the demand and this is the supply. So D of X, S of X. Do you remember how this point was called? And we did these examples, we looked at these examples in the review chapter. How was that called? Where everyone is happy. The consumer is happy, the, the producer is happy at this point. How do we call that? That is called the equilibrium point. When the supply equals the demand, we get the equilibrium point. So let's illustrate and see where the consumer surplus is and the producer surplus is. So this is what? And this is what? What is this one? And what is this one? What is the first one at the top? The red one. The consumer surplus? Exactly. And what is the, I have no idea, this one. Producer. That's it. That's it. At the equilibrium point. So now let's look at an example. I'll stop when time is um, 8.15, but at least I'd like to start a problem. If I'm not logged out, please. I'm not logged out, please. Uh, page page um, 479. 479. Okay. So um, D of X, S of X, um, find the equilibrium point, find the consumer surplus at the equilibrium point, and find the producer surplus at the equilibrium point. So let's choose a simple example like this. 